this is really to invent invention of microscope. Okay. So who invented the microscope? Nobody really know anymore. Uh, the earliest record I could find uh, was four thousand years ago. People use water droplet. So you have seen water droplet? Yeah, you can see uh, it's, it's a lens. So four thousand years ago, people felt uh, they can build a microscope by uh, putting water droplet in the tube. And four thousand years ago, people have. Uh, this is Raker in China. Uh, they have made a, a, a microscope that came about 150 times magnification. Okay. But the Chinese people never managed to use glass. Okay. So the modern microscope now we have been using uh, mostly came from Europe. Okay. Lens is important because we have learned this in high school. If I have parallel light beam and pass through a lens, all beam will be focused at the focal spot. Okay. This is basic principle. What I want to point out is if any laser beam, any light go in parallel, <coughs> perpendicular to this uh, lens, they would reach the focus. Any light that goes to the center of the lens, because at the center of the lens, Th these two surfaces are <coughs> parallel, so light can go through without any bending. But if the light goes through the edge, the top here, because the two surfaces are at an angle, light will bend. Okay, so there are two key points. Parallel light beam will go to the focus, and the beam goes to the center of lens will not bend. Okay. And this is basically the, uh, the, the principle of how the lens work. Uh, so now if I have a bug here, and this is my lens, so the light that goes through the center would just go through straight, and the light parallel to uh, a particular to the lens would go to the focus. So human eyes would think, would trace back this light and think the bug is here, and it got bigger. Okay. This is how magnifying glass work. Okay. If we put the object within the focus of a lens, uh, we form a virtual uh, image. The virtual image means uh, light does not really uh, came from here. It's a virtually came from there, but it's not. Okay. We, it looks like uh, an image here, but actually there's nothing here. Uh, how lens work is if I have a giraffe which is very far away, the image will be small. Okay. That's basically how camera work. Okay. I can have a small camera, the film is small, but I can take in a big giraffe. Right? The film doesn't the camera doesn't have to be as big as a giraffe to take a picture of giraffe. All I need is put the giraffe a bit far away. So if I want to take a large object, generally we need to back off, right? The further we back off, uh, the larger uh, object we can take a picture, right? And that's how it works. Uh, so the closer it is, the larger the image is, okay? But to build a microscope, because these object, now I'm not looking at giraffe, I'm looking at small cells. Cells are small, so I need to place them really close to the lens so the image will be magnified. Okay, that's the basic principle of a uh, microscope. Okay. So the, the key point is, if I want to a large image, I want to get the lens really close to what I want to see. Okay. So this is the basic layout of a compound microscope. I have a, my, up, my sample here, say a tiny butterfly. Butterfly is not a good example. Let's say this is a cell, okay? Uh, 
and I have a very small lens called objective lens. It has to be very close to the sample so I get big magnification. Okay. And I deform the image here. Then I have a second lens called eyepiece to magnify that image again. So if you still remember in high school, we play with the uh, microscope. We do have an eyepiece, we do have an objective lens. The objective lens typically is 20 times, 50 times, or 100 times. The eyepiece journey is 10 times. So if I have a 100 times objective lens, 10 times uh, eyepiece, I will have a 1,000 times magnification. So this is the basic structure of a compound uh, microscope. I hope you are still with me. Okay. Uh, nobody knows who invented the microscope because it's actually not so difficult to find out if you use a lens, a uh, thing will appear bigger. Uh, these are a, a microscope uh, in early 1600s. Uh, this is a microscope in late 1600, of course, these are based on glass lens. Uh, this is a famous one, so Hook uh, have this microscope. Uh, the magnification was 35 times. It's not state-of-the-art microscope, it only magnifies 35 times. But he published a book, I think, in um, 1665. Uh, he has draw all the drawing of this little box he has seen using this microscope. Uh, of course, he, I think he observed the cells uh, that he was able to see on his cell, which was pretty big. Uh, but he was, the microscope had only made it by 35 times. And this is a microscope uh, in eight, 1850s. Uh, this is a book published in 1871 that uh, teach people how to build microscope. Okay. And you can see uh, they use uh, oil lamp. Uh, the reason was the electrical libel was invented in 1880s. So, so that was the best thing they could use. Okay. Remember, the book was published in 1871, but Edison invented the light bulb in, 19, uh, in 18, much, much later. Okay. <coughs> uh, this is a microscope uh, commercially available in 1930. This now looks very modern. Okay. Now this is a microscope <laughs> with some $100,000. Uh, now microscope has a lot of electronic in it, but I want to point out it still have an objective lens here. There are three or four you can choose. You can rotate them. There's still an eyepiece. This is an eyepiece lens here. So even though this is a $100,000 objective uh, microscope, actually all you need is this one and that one. It's the same. Okay. Uh, so deep now we understand how a microscope work. Uh, but what I want to introduce now is what is the limitation of microscope, optical microscope. Uh, light that comes to the nature of light. Now we know light are electromagnetic wave. Okay. The physics now we know is if I have a charge in space and the charge move, okay, it would generate electrical uh, magnetic wave. Okay, electromagnetic wave are oscillating electrical field. The red one, electrical field. The blue one, are magnetic field. Uh, so they just propagate. Okay. Uh, so this is now our understanding of light. They are wave. They're not totally wave. It's somewhere between light is somewhere between a particle and wave. But wave explains a lot of things. 
Electromagnetic wave cover a very broad spectrum. Okay. Here are uh, visible light. It had a wavelength of about a mi uh, 0.5 micron. This is 5 times 10 to minus 7 meter. Okay, pretty sure. Okay. And, and we have X ray. We know X ray has very short wavelengths. They penetrate things, okay. And we have microwave. These are the waves uh, that our microwave oven emit to heat up water molecule, okay. And these are radio frequencies, okay. So human eye can only detect uh, electromagnetic wave in this very narrow region. If we zoom in this region, uh, there are red light, green, blue, okay. It mostly covers from 0.7 micron to 0.4 micron. Okay. Of course, there are short wavelengths for blue, long wavelengths for red. In biology, we have, we mostly use, uh, because, uh, People like Robert, okay, they want to know where the pr a particular protein is in the cell. So if I use, just use uh, regular visible light, I won't be able to tell. I can see the structure of the cell, but I won't be able to s tell where the pr these proteins are located, okay. So Robert will tell us later, uh, they, ha they have a, uh, many techniques they can uh, put a dye molecule attached to the protein, and then we are actually not looking at the protein itself, we are looking at the dye molecules. So the dye molecule, we know atom molecule, they have a nucleus, they have electrons outside, okay. What happened is when we put light in, the light can interact with one electron and excite them to higher energy state. When the electron assault a photon, it go to something called excited state, and then it because eventually you have to give back this energy because excited elect electron are not stable, so they get come down to ground state and then emit a light. What interesting is this assault light do not have to be have the same color uh, with the emitted light. In this case. Uh, even though the incident light is blue, the emitted light can be green, could be red, okay? This actually is good because I can put in blue light. I can put in, uh, say, green light to excite the dye molecule and it will emit in yellow or red. And what I do is I put in a filter Allow me only to see the red, not seeing the green. And it actually make the image contrast much better, as we will see later. So that's the trick, the technique that now we use. So because of the wave nature of light, things actually get complicated. This is also another experiment we probably have done in high school. If I have light pass through two slit, well, anyway, when it pass through two slit, they actually will spread out. This is called diffraction of light. Actually, any wave would have diffractions. So when I see an object that close to the wavelength of the light, it start to spread out. This is called diffraction. One interesting thing about diffraction is it's spread out and then they have interference. So we see dark, bright, dark, bright, because interference, we can have constructive interference or destructive uh, interference. In the destructive interference, two light waves will just cancel each other and I will see black spot. That's a property of wave. And because of this property, 
when we are building microscope, it actually produces a very big limitation for optical microscope. If I have a lens, I focus the light using the lens. Because light came from everywhere, from this here. So light propagates from B. It can go to everywhere because of diffraction. Okay, it's spread out. If I look at this point, the red beam would have a constructive interference. But the green, that overlap here, would have destructive interference. So if I have a lens focus light into my sample, depending on the location of the sample, I can have constructive interference, I can have destructive interference. So I'll, what I see is actually a pattern. So if I focus light, a light beam this is what at a focal point. I have constructive interference or destructive interference. I see all these rings. <coughs> okay. These rings generally is not a big problem because if I look at this first ring here, the intensity is much weaker. But because of this wave nature of light, it would not allow me to generate a spot very small. The spot size would not be smaller than the wavelength of light. Okay. And that's the nature of wave. By law of physics, we couldn't overcome that. Okay. So if I have a large beam, the beam diameter is big, I would have smaller spot. If I have a small beam, I would have a large spot. That's the nature of light. Okay. So if I want high resolution, I need to have a lens as big as possible. Then it would give me the smallest spot possible. Okay. So here I have three objective lens. This one, see the beam diameter is small because this angle is small. Okay. It would give us a bigger spot. This one here. I need to bring the lens to, uh, to, to the sample as close as possible. And it means this angle will be large, the spot will be small. So this is something called num numerical aperture or called NA number. The larger the NA is, the smaller the spot can be. Okay. So during the past 100 years, all these uh, uh, microscope company like Leica, Olympus, Leica, uh, they try to make this spot as small as possible using a high NA uh, objector. Okay, this is a simulation. This is NA of 0.5. This is 2 micro. Okay, and this is NA of 1.3. Okay. And, and again, we we'll see this interference. No matter what, uh, this is not something that we cannot get rid of. So during the past 100 years, the microscope objective become complicated because the whole point is to design a high NA objective so the spot can be small. You can see uh, the, the objective is not a single piece of lens anymore. It's actually pretty complicated. Okay. Uh, and only microscope company know how to do that. I build microscope, but I had to buy objective because I don't know how to build a big, a great objective things. And then, so here's the diffraction limit that we have during the past several hundred years, or even four thousand years. You see, up to two thousand six, every microscope you buy, no matter how expensive they are, some of them. Expensive objective I have is twelve thousand dollars for one lens. Okay. But all of them have this diffraction limit problem. That means if I have two molecules getting too close, the spot, even though this is one dot, one molecule, one nanometer, the spot would be two hundred fifty nanometer big. Okay. When they are too close, I can 
cannot distinguish them. Okay. If I focus a laser beam using a lens, <coughs> again, this is sparse size. The buis will be about 250 nanometer. It will be about 500 nanometer long. Uh, if I use this spot to scan my sample, again, my resolution will not be better than 250 nanometer. Uh, this is what we had up to year 2006. Okay, and Robert will tell us what we have been doing using this diffraction limited uh, microscope, what optical micro microscope can do uh, and what they cannot do.